Hi, this is Jeff Chow. In this last screencast for MP2, I want to show you how you can manipulate um, on-screen elements, which is a common way in Android apps to interact with the user. So let me show you an example of this. So when I pull up the UI for um, MP2, what you'll see is that if I put invalid parameters into my board configuration, there's two things that happen. First of all, there's a message displayed here that says invalid board setup. And then also the start uh, menu is disabled. I can't actually start the game. So this is really nice UI design. It's a, it's a small piece of you know, a, a more sophisticated potential approach to this, but you know, preventing users from doing things incorrectly is a big part of interacting with them. And so this is a really nice approach in the sense that it both is giving me information about what's wrong. So if the start menu were just disabled, uh, that would be very confusing. The user wouldn't know what to do. Now, you could argue that maybe we should show a little error message about what the valid parameters should be or something like this. But this gives me information that there's something wrong with the parameters I put in, right? Uh, note that as soon as I put valid parameters in, that error message vanishes and the start menu is now uh, enabled again. Um, and so this is nice, a nice example of um, responding to the user by manipulating elements on screen. And so let me show you how that's actually being done. Um, so there's two components of this. First, there's, there's a start button here. If I go to the UI uh, designer, um, and that's part, part of uh, what's, what's being manipulated here. Um, and then I'm gonna go over and look at the setup activity. Um, and so th there's two things that are happening. Um, then, and I'll, I'll let you read some of the comments in here. So essentially what I'm doing is I, I use this class to watch changes to the different text fields that are part of the UI. So the width, height, and end value all use the same text watcher. And what this does is anytime the user text changes, notice that as soon as I enter a valid value, that error message goes away and the start button is not clickable. And the way this is done is that this function right here after text change is called anytime any one of these fields changes. And what it does is it does uh, two things. It grabs um, a reference to both the start button and the error notice, and then it adjusts the visibility and the enabled state of those two elements. So if the setup is valid, it sets the start button to enable, meaning that it's clickable. Otherwise, it sets the start button to disable, meaning that it's grayed out. If the setup is valid, it sets the error notice to visibility view.gone, which means that it's invisible. Otherwise, this means this is an invalid setup and it sets the visibility of the error notice to view.visible. So let's actually go over here and see if we can find that error notice um, because I'm, I'm actually having a hard time seeing it. But I bet if I pull up uh, the text here, um, let's see here, uh, where is it? This is the setup activity. Uh, oh, here we go, yeah. So you can see that the default visibility on this text view is gone, right? Um, let's set that to visible. Um, and now what you can see, go back and show it here, right? Uh, so now you can see it showing up in, in the layout designer, right? Um, I, I believe that as Ben was designing this, he probably used this to figure out where it was, but then I want the default visibility of it to be, to be gone, right? Meaning that it's, it's not part of the layout. So this is one of the ways you can you know, interact with the user in a certain way, is by enabling or disabling different uh, elements that are on screen, right? Because this is a text view, I also have the ability to modify um, the text that's shown, right? So I can do something like error notice dot set, um, set all caps, that's interesting, uh, set text, and then I can provide it with a, a character sequence, right? So I can do something like set text here, um, and, and that I'll, I, so I can actually also modify the text that's shown, right? And that can be a useful thing as well. That's one of the things you need to do in order to get full points on MP2. So this, these are hopefully tips that will help you down the line when you're working on your final project and on other MPs in the class. Good luck on MP2, um, and uh, we'll see you in office hours.